say, okay, listen, you know, I've told you that this year, our theme for the standpoint is the woman on the move because this is our 10th anniversary. Can you believe it? The, the standpoint is 10 years and we are going to have our amazing programs in July. But we are the women on the move. And if you haven't joined us, please kindly join in because uh, if somebody says slow motion is better than no motion. So one step at a time, we'll get there. And we are determined to empower you. We are determined to give you that information you need to get going and to wake up from your slumber from and get out of your fear. And if you let your fear push you to do what is right and what is good for you. So we are going to talk about how you can grow your business, how you can deal with the challenges, the fears, the failures, how you can put yourself together. Thank you to GTP for my cloth. My dress was made for me by Ophelia Crossland Designs, our makeup products by Papa Cosmetics, applied by Makeup and More. Thank you to Plus Size for my shoe. Get in touch with them. They're on Facebook as well. And those of you who want to start your own business, especially selling shoes or dealing in shoes, get in touch with her and she will sort you out. We take a break when we come back. Ha, who wants to start a business? Who wants to grow a business? Who wants to be a millionaire, self-made? Especially in these days where they said, women, you can't make it on our own. If a woman is making it, that means there's some, um, you know what I mean. We'll be back. <laughs> Welcome back to the standpoint. Now, this is the program not to mess. You know how to become a millionaire. Because one of my guests is on a mission to make sure that one million people are, you know, um, helped or supported to become millionaires um, worldwide. So if you miss it, as we see in our local parlance, walla, walla, wawo bancha. So if you want somebody else, a family member to say, Please call them and let them tune in immediately to watch this program. But hey, this is the standpoint and this is a program for you. Let me say thank you to our sponsors, Wilma Africa. They produce phyto cooking oil, which is made from the palm fruit. So it's cholesterol free, fortified with vitamin A and then endorsed by the Ghana Medical Association. The important to this country, Fortune Rice, which comes in three variants, the orange package one and then the green package and then the wine package one the green package is for the soft dishes orange for the medium i mean not too soft not too hard i mean dishes and then the wine package one is the one i love most is the long grain with the aroma and it's for the jollof and everything let me also say thank you to ghana oil company limited that's goil goil ghana and when pan kasa now to the main show today. Hmm. We are going to talk about how to grow your business, how to be you, how to be a powerful woman, younger person, and um, believe in yourself and be yourself. You've already met Ellen and uh, Honey. Today I have with me at my extreme left, Linda Boachi. She's based in UK. She's a career coach and mindset strategist. Now, that's a new one to me. Mindset strategist. Everything starts from the mind, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Good to have you on the standpoint, Linda. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so pleased to be here. Okay, and next to Linda, I have, let me just call him, Mr. Parling. Okay, the, the first name he'll teach us how to pronounce, pronounce it later. But he's a German, he's from Germany. He says, self made millionaire. Self made. He wasn't born with a golden spoon in, he didn't inherit family you know, properties. Self made millionaire on a mission to financially liberate one million people worldwide. Ha! Me, myself, I day inside. Let me sit properly. <laughs> Welcome Thank to you Ghana. Thank you. Your first time in Ghana? My first time in Ghana, yes. You see, we, we, we are the, you know, Ghanaians, Africans, you know, she's not. She's not looking very African. Okay. In my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Self-made millionaire. Yes. How did you grow up? How um, was it like? I grew up in a very poor village, actually, in Germany. And um, when I grew up, my uh, parents, they didn't have any money at all. So... 
Um, they used to kind of scream and yell to each other about money, who spends money on what. And I, as a kid, as a little boy, I found that absolutely horrible. So uh, at one point I decided, because it was all about money, money, not enough money and these kind of things, so I decided at one point um, I don't want never really go through something like this. I never want to argue about money. I never want to money be an issue. So I decided as a little boy, uh, probably like three, four years old already, like I want to have money. So I had a look around uh, later on when I grew up. Um, who are the people actually that have money? And I found two, two types of people. The first people were persons that had their own businesses. Um, and as it was a small village, it was mainly like uh, bakeries, like a small bakery, small shops, and these kind of things. And the other people with money were people that were investing. So they took money, invested into something, and they got more money back. And I always found that very attractive because I didn't want to work too much for too money. Too much. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and my, my mantra as a little kid was, if you have to choose, take both. So I started my first business at the age of 16. And you, you, you what? My first business I started at Your the age own of business? My, my own business, yeah. Age I was 16? 16, yeah. I wasn't get paid for it, but uh, I had that IT company that gave me all these uh, IT equipment, all these IT books, and uh, um, I tested it and wrote articles about it, and they decided based on my opinion if they pulled it into their program or not. So what I got was a lot of knowledge at a very early age, which helped me later to build up an uh, IT company that did uh, millions of euro in revenue and uh, delivered IT services in uh, 170 countries at the end. And you had what? <laughs> <laughs> an IT company that uh, delivered IT services in 170 countries worldwide. 170 countries <laughs> yeah. worldwide. It's pretty much nearly. You, you, sh you should say the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> really, say uh, the whole world. Uh, that, that, that would be an exaggeration. So uh, I think it's 196 countries, depending on if you count uh, certain countries as, yeah. um, depending on if you go with the UN definition or other definitions. So it's roughly 200, and we were missing 30, but. Yeah. Did you at any point tell your parents that I will have money in future? Yeah, I always, I always told everyone, so I kind of committed myself to it. And did they believe you? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, yeah, so actually what my parents wanted for me um, was uh, to do some kind of apprenticeship and uh, get some work locally, and I was like, no, I want to go to university, I want to study, um, I want to um, earn more, I want to, want to do something, something different, because I realized that the people that were working for their money, they weren't the ones that had money. So. Okay. And um, do they still live in the village? They still live in the village, yeah. The still yeah. same old village? Same old village. When they see you, what change. do they say to you? Um, it kind of depends on, like, uh, I mean, meanwhile, I, uh, I know they are very, very proud of what I achieve and what I do and traveling all the world, um, but they have a way to, let's say, not show it. You know, our parents yeah. sometimes are no, like, yeah. um, if you're in the room, it's like, yeah, I could do better. Why are you doing this? Why are you not doing something, something like, why don't you really work? Things like that. that right. And then you turn around, they're like, hey, he's doing such amazing things. So. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want you to get swollen head, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing, amazing, good to know. Linda. Hello. Linda Boachi. Linda Boachi. Where are you from? <laughs> I'm from Kewa Bitifi. Kewa Bitifi, okay. Bitifi. Were you born yeah. here? Yes, I, I grew up here actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I grew up in Jolu in, in Ghana. Um, went to school here, went to what, what we used to call JSS. Right. Here, and then started SSS. And then okay, then, what you yeah. went to, I, mean, I went to the proper school system, the O level and the A level. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I yeah, went to the proper yeah. one, you did the A, yeah. No, well, I did the middle one, it's changed now. No, so, okay. So now this is old school. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah. you grew up here with your parents, you have siblings? I have siblings, I have two brothers, one older and one younger. Um, and then my parents decided to move to the UK. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we all got out of school and to the UK mm -hmm. and then started our lives there. Okay. Um, but how yeah. was it like growing up? What were your dreams? What kind of aspiration did you have? I, I had specific aspirations when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. I um, wanted to work in the Bank of Ghana because my auntie works in the Bank of Ghana. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to go to the University of Ghana in Legon because it, it was quite near me in Accra. Um, and I went to um, Holy Child because it's a it was a prestigious university, um, SSS, and right. I wanted to go there. So I had those specific plans That's I wanted right. to go. 
But as you know, things change. change. Oh, okay. So yeah. you didn't go to um, senior high here? You didn't go to... I, I went, went to, to, you went to Holy Child? I went to, yeah, yeah, I, went, went I, I started and okay. then I, um, you had to go. Yeah, and yeah. Then I had, so w what did you study at the uni? I studied international business, French and Chinese, Mandarin uh, Chinese. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And now you are doing what? You are what? A mindset and strategist? And now I'm a mindset strategist, business coach and career coach. How did that come in? Okay, the business <laughs> side I can, you know, understand because that's what you studied in school, but... How does the rest, yeah. So um, when I finished my degree, I, I worked in Paris in, in investment banking and then worked again in China. Um, but I, it, within banking, I found that even though I could do the job, I didn't want to go to work. And sometimes we wouldn't have too much to do um, because we're waiting for some trades to come in. Yeah. And I was just bored. I just wanted to go home. I didn't even care if they didn't pay me. I just <laughs> wanted to go <laughs> home. So I realized quickly that it wasn't the right environment for me. But I loved working with people. Right. So I quit that job and went into HR and doing the recruitment and looking at people's CVs. And I was always so excited to see the different CVs because right. um, we were recruiting for the whole of Europe. So I'd call them and give them back a lot of feedback on their CVs. And I realized, oh, I really enjoy this. Mm -hmm. So then I started helping people outside of work with their CVs. I was living in, in France at the time. Right. So French people that wanted to go to the UK and mm -hmm. help them with their CVs with the English. And then um, I got a funding to do it as a business That's afterwards. Impressive. So I went to careers, and then the mindset came into it, because as you know, everything starts with what you think about. Right. Um, so what I found working with different universities and helping a lot of young people with their careers is, I can, I can help you with your CV and give you the perfect document with my eyes closed, but if you don't have the right mindset you don't think you're going to get the job. You don't think you're worth it. You don't think that you deserve to be paid this amount. They always fell down at interview stage. So then with my own self-development, I developed a mindset to add to it. And that, that's what makes me different, really, just right. developing someone so they're the perfect person for the job on paper and right. in person. Right. That's, that's interesting, though. Mm. Do you believe in this mindset thing? Yeah, definitely. It all starts in your head, and uh, you need to get rid of these uh, beliefs. Like, I was, um, the last four, few days, I'm here now for three days in Ghana, we were talking at several universities, and many young people approached me. They are well-educated, they are hungry, they want to do something, they want to change Ghana, they want to change the world, and what do they do? Mm. Actually, nothing. And the reason is that many people are approaching and asking questions like, you know, I'm just a poor boy from a small village, mm -hmm. I'm black, I'm female, I'm too young, I'm too old. And I tell everyone literally the same. If you have a great idea, if you want to go in business, I don't care about the color of your skin, about your sex, about your uh, religion, whatever it is. It's all about the idea and delivering value to the marketplace. If mm -hmm. you do that, you will be fine in business mm -hmm. everywhere in the world. And is that simple as that? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much as simple as that. I, I found that in, in South Africa, I found that in the United States, in Sweden, UK, Germany, like all over Europe, in Asia. Um, it's pretty much that. And mm -hmm. especially for women, they sometimes have these things in their head, they have to step back because if they are married for their husband or it's not their traditional role. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if they get rid of that mindset, if they get rid of this thinking, women are unstoppable, both in business as well as in trading. <laughs> There's somebody here that women are unstoppable when, it, I mean, when they make up their mind yes. to do something, to put exactly. their mind to it that we're going to do this. Let me take a break when we come back or we'll continue this because um, I'm just wondering how you're going to do it. Empower and, you know, help one million people worldwide to become millionaires? Yeah, to become financially free. Well, whatever financially the, yeah, free. Whatever the number is for yes. you, it's different. But. Well, let me say <laughs> thank you to, of course, go got to your gut. I tell you women, your gut is very good for you. Casa Preco, they gave us Veraldo and they also produce our wet purified mineral water. This is the first purified water that is 
driven by charity. You buy it and you're indirectly contributing to the National Cardiothoracic Fund. And I think it's, it's a wonderful you know, idea. That's why I love and appreciate them. Thank you to House of Foods, Cake Technique, and uh, Matamis who give us the port. Yet Cleaning Services takes care of our environment. Remember, this program is aired on ABN TV or Sky Channel 195. And on Virgin TV, which is in UK, on channel 842. You don't have to miss it. Follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Like our Facebook page, The Standpoint. And of course, our YouTube channel is always on the screen. So if you miss anything, you have to go and have a review. We'll take a break and we'll be back shortly. Welcome back to The Standpoint. Would you say education plays a role, formal education, in becoming financially independent? Um, in my honest opinion, absolutely not. Um, what you learn uh, as, uh, in an education is important if you want to follow a certain career path. But uh, the governments worldwide or the school systems worldwide don't teach you about how to make money, how to maintain money, how to deal with money, um, how to start a business, and li like all these things that are important when it comes about money or investments. So that's not part of the curriculum in any country in the world. So education is great. You always should uh, get as much knowledge as possible. I, for myself, read like 30 minutes every day and that sums up to around 100 books every year and I would encourage every one of you wow. to do exactly the same thing because I think we can all agree the more you know the more valuable you are and the better you are in doing certain things both in business as well as in your career and you will definitely benefit so from these it's things. It's a conscious effort you make yeah. 30 minutes every day yeah. you read a book. Never so stops. Never stop. Yeah. You, you, you have a daughter. Yes, I have a daughter. Ah, I like the <laughs> smile on your face. Yeah. <laughs> How old is she? Oh, she turned four yeah, uh, last year in September. So, so she'll be five in September this yeah, year. Exactly. Is, is, she, is she four and a half going on 20 <laughs> kind of passing, or she's just a little kid? You, you get me? Like, she, she's very open minded because if you are the dad, I'm sure you're pushing <laughs> a lot of ideas into her head already. Yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, it wasn't necessary to push it. Like kids observe their um, environment very, very well. Mm. Like when she, as an example, when she was free, um, I'm divorced, so my ex-wife lives with her like 200 kilometers away, mm -hmm. and she's a complete daddy girl. So yeah. when I enter the room, everything else becomes secondary. <laughs> and uh, she was asking, like, "Mommy, can we visit Desi, Daddy today?" And uh, she, having a normal job in an office, uh, she said. No, honey, we cannot visit Daddy today because Daddy is working. And she then, because I earn my money mostly off investments, she was standing there and saying, no, Mommy, Daddy doesn't work. <laughs> Daddy earns money. That's a huge difference. So <laughs> <laughs> That's my kind of job. <laughs> That it doesn't work. <laughs> he earns money. Exactly. That's a huge difference. It is, yeah. But is she right? Is that, does yeah. it make a huge difference? Yeah, it's, it's a huge difference. Like uh, when you want to become financially free, um, it's actually a three step um, process. If you want me to explain it. Yes, please. The first step would be you need to make sure that you earn more every month than you spend. So you have a surplus in your, in your bank account every month. And then you take that money very carefully away from you because otherwise you will spend it. And you use that money to invest. Mm. And then you get more money like every month. So you have more money to reinvest. Mm. And that becomes like a circle. So you invest more, you get more. So you invest even more and you get more. And at one point, if you continue doing so, which would be uh, the last step, you would actually make more money passively from your investments than you spend every month. And then you don't need to work. You don't need to exchange your time for money and then you can really do um, whatever you're passionate about, mm. whatever you want, you can start to change the world. So it's not that attractive mm. to think that you have money sitting at the bank, you rather have to invest it. You, yeah, definitely. I mean, I've learned so much um, growing as well and I invest in the stock market too. It, it just, it's just a common sense approach and an easy approach of doing it. And you almost have to unlearn everything we've been told 
and you've learned watching your parents because if they did it, <laughs> you would, they would have taught you that. But when you study successful people, mm -hmm. what they've done, you think, okay, well, everyone's doing it. There's something to this. So then you, you learn and it, it really works. It, it's tough having to un unlearn, mm -hmm. isn't it? Especially when people, we live in a society where something has been done in a certain way for a long time. How, how do you learn it? Sometimes the forces are so much that you, the individual, you seem to be the lone voice. Mm -hmm. How do you stand out? Um, well, you, you need to have a strong inner motivation and some discipline uh, associated with it because otherwise you will hear like different things from all sides and they will all criticize you. Um, but you have to stand up and say, okay, this is what I want to do. This is what I really love. And for all of you who didn't find their purpose in, in life yet, just have a watch uh, at things you love to do. If you, you, you will sooner or later encounter something where the time just flies. You're doing something and then you're all out of a sudden, uh, you think it's five minutes, but you've been doing something for four hours. And this is something what you really love to do. Mm -hmm. And then you can start thinking about uh, how to make a business out of it, how to earn money out of it, because um, you're al always best at what you love to do. Yeah. And uh, don't let other people influence you. I, 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 um, love talking to all the youths and we had some speeches at universities this week um, because they are so young, they can learn a lot and they have time, especially in terms of compounding when they start the three-step process, um, when they start at a young age, that piles up to a huge amount of money later in life. And uh, how do you, do you start? Do you start with a very little that you have or you need to save up to go and invest? Actually, I started with uh, like normal, and I, I was broke two times in life. One time, very, very hard. I had like uh, roughly 600,000 CDs minus to my name. So um, I had to really work and do a good business to get out of that. Um, so actually, you don't need money to start. Um, like my first business, my first big business or bigger business that I started, I had to, to borrow 10,000 euro, so roughly... Um, 50,000 CDs from someone to be able to put down the money to legally start that business because I didn't have the money. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I paid him out with some interest and all these kind of things. Um, but that was my way to start it. And if you have a great idea and you find people that stand by your side and that believe in you because your, your purpose and your message is mm -hmm. so strong, you don't need any money to start a business. Mm -hmm. So are you telling me that now what you do is just invest and you watch your money grow? Yeah, pretty much. So I daddy doesn't work. <laughs> he daddy earns doesn't. money. Daddy is lazy. Daddy doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs> Your money is working for you. Yeah. Is it possible to also work for somebody and be financially independent? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I do. Um, so I have my investments, but I love what I do. So mm. you can do that. Work in a business. I talk about intrapreneurship. Intrapreneurship. Intrapreneurship, where yeah. you are an entrepreneur, but within a company. And sometimes, not everybody's an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. sometimes it's better to be working for someone. You get a steady paycheck each month, especially if you've got dependents. But you're not to just go in and do it a nine to five. Yeah. You're looking at ways to get a promotion. You're looking at ways to make the company better. You're actually invested in the company. You're invested mentally in the company. You want the company to grow. You're thinking of new ways to do it. So definitely it's good to, you, it's possible to be financially free right. and still do a job because you choose to, okay. not because you have to. Yeah. I like that because you <laughs> choose to, not because, because you, you have, have to. to. Yeah. Because I, I believe you can't be successful if you, you have to do something, yeah. you know. And yeah. thank you so much for explaining the purpose bit because I get to ask the question so many times when I say you have to know your purpose and fulfill it, the people, how do you know your purpose? How do you, and I'm sure they will ask that question again, <laughs> you know. So let me take a break. When we come back, we'll get to the audience to ask their question. But again, I say thank you to GTP for my club. This is the Nouveau um, brand and um, Ophelia Crossland Designs make the dress for me. I'm so grateful to them. My shoe is by Plus Size. I've told you about them already. Makeup products by Papa Cosmetics and applied by Makeup and More. My braids was done for me by Auntie Alice. So, aha, uh -huh. don't sit there and say, oh, I want to dress up like it. I want to look at it. But everything of mine sitting here is sponsored. We'll be back. Welcome.
Welcome back to the stand point and I really hope you are learning. I am learning a lot. I'm sure that from today onwards, my, uh, my mindset will be on another level. Watch me, oh, I'm coming. Oh, you hear, you smell, no, you hear my scent. <laughs> Okay, so just as a standpoint, and again, I say thank you to our supporters, Gogot Yogurt, Awake Purified Mineral Water, um, Casa Preco Veraldo, um, Apple and Pineapple. Um, we're so grateful to all of them. Of course, our port by Matamis, House of Foods, Cake Technique, they all support us, and we are so grateful to them. Now, um, let me start with my beautiful daughter here. She wants to ask a question. I'm, I'm into this business, that is a food business. And what, whatever, whatever income that I generate from the business, I invest it into my education. So now there is nothing left for me for other things. I want to ask, do I, um, should I stop, uh, defer my course, that is uh, stop or pause the education for now, and then invest into some other thing that will generate me more income and it will later continue the education. So um, two things I would uh, like to say for it. The first thing is that uh, education or the things you have in your head, the wisdom you have, that normally pays the best interest because you have that wisdom for a lifetime and you can um, do something with it for a lifetime and can have earnings out of it for a lifetime. So I always, uh, still today, I'm going to courses. I want to expand my, my personal knowledge um, and I spend a lot of money on that. So I definitely wouldn't cut... Um, the money at, on the education side. On the other hand, um, if you feel like you don't have enough money left to um, put it aside to invest, I would encourage you to pay yourself first. That means from everything, every CD that comes in, you take 10% and put it aside. You pay yourself first, and then you pay all the rest. And if you do that, and at the end of the month, and I had many of these months when I started, right. Right. Um, if you have money, uh, if you're short on money and you need to pay bills, you will find a way magically to get that money to pay that bills, but you still have the 10% you put aside. Mm. And that's uh, the key. Uh, so always make sure you pay yourself first. So every month it's guaranteed that you have some money left mm. over for investments, but don't cut it from education. Now let's talk about you. The last time, you know, is that Ellen who was talking about all a uh, honey says sometime one thing about leaders is... Um, you give, give, give. Sometimes you forget about you. You yourself, adding value to yourself and all that. Mm. What are you really um, into now? Apart from giving to people, helping people strategize and all that. What do you do? How do you add value to yourself? How do you keep yourself happy? Ah, lots of things. I mean, <laughs> coming to Ghana, I've eaten my weight's worth in fruit. <laughs> That's my guilty pleasure. I love food and just a different taste, especially here, because right. I don't get it in the West. Right. It's not the same quality. So right. I do that. But I love music as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to a bar and there was young people, live music, and they had renditions of, of classic music that... I could, I, could be, I could be there all day. Yeah. I love music, so I make sure that I surround myself with these kind of environments. I love meeting people, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go out. When I travel, because I, I travel a lot now, I'll just go on the street, go and talk to the locals, go, just go mingle with people, you know, learn something about myself, learn something about their culture, yeah. um, and you just never know. Mm. Yeah. You and I, we know our people. You know what they'll be sitting there asking now? Is she married? Is she married? Mm. Mm. <laughs> She's on the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, part of being in Ghana no. as well is fi finalizing those arrangements. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm nosy. I'm, I'm nosy like that. Oh, yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason I chose this show. <laughs> oh, it's good. it's good to know. But in total, would you say that you are happy? You're a happy person deciding to do what you... You, you eventually did, though you had a dream of working at the Bank of Ghana? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm happy. I'm happy. Everything I, I did, I've learned from. I mean, it hasn't been plain sailing. Yeah. I mean, I, as a career coach, I got fired from a job. Um, but that made me who I am today, you know, mm -hmm. learning. Okay, well, that, that wasn't the right thing for me. I didn't even want to be there anyway. Right. Um, and thank God I got fired. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be doing this. So, yes, I, I would say I'm happy. I've... 
I'm learning as I go, and there are lots of things that I want to do. I want to be back in Ghana and Paran as many people as possible. But it, it's a journey, and I'm appreciating the journey and, and learning and growing. Mm. I, and I love what I do. Ah, so like, you yeah. failed before? Absolutely, and failure is a part of it. I always say, Linda told mm. just when you're failing or when things don't go around, just say, Linda told me I was going. It's going to happen. We yeah. we, we get that out of the way. It's going to happen. Mm. So when it happens, how quickly do you put put you pick yourself back up and do it? Mm. Yeah, mm. definitely. Yeah, you failed before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, uh, you actually, played rock I, I, bottom I, I, before. Yeah, uh, like uh, when, when I um, uh, started studying, uh, I was uh, in a in a position that I had to move to a town where uh, or to a city where university was, and uh, um, I didn't didn't manage to to study and come up with all the costs associated with that. So um, rock bottom. Uh, was when I uh, was in that little apartment, didn't have any electricity anymore because the pays were not, uh, the bills were not paid. Um, I was like two months behind on my uh, rental payments, so after three months they will throw you out. So I was like nearly uh, becoming homeless. homeless. Yeah, and I had like that small bathroom, and I still have that furniture today to remind me um, where I had uh, a job interview and I needed to shave. So I put a small candle on it to see, some, uh, see myself in the mirror to be able to do that. And that pretty much was rock bottom because it was the last candle. And after that, if that job interview didn't fail, um, I would have been kind of homeless on the street. So um, that was pretty close to it. And then I started to um, do an apprenticeship. And after that, I uh, was able to put some money aside and uh, get business going and raise it. And um, yeah, from there, mm. it the, the, up. Does, do, do, do you have fears? Um, yeah. That you may hit, you may <laughs> go back there sometime. Again, God forbid. I mean, it can uh, happen. You, you always have kind of fears. Uh, every, every, every person fears something. Now, if you are kind of an overachiever, you don't have fears, you are just stressed. Mm -hmm. It's just stress. It's not, you're not afraid of anything. Thing. But if you're true to yourself, like every person has fears, and uh, you just have to be able to manage them. So um, if you think about it, uh, like God is a great coach, so he, he's a great trainer. He will give you challenges like all the time, and some of them are really huge, but he never will give you anything you can't deal with. So if you have that kind of trust and that kind of belief, both in God and in yourself, you can face these fears and just do it anyway. Yeah, it's scaring, but just do it. <laughs> wow. Good to know. Now, Linda, I know you are going back after a <laughs> while, well, and you'll be back, I hopefully. Will. But what do you want to leave us with, the viewers of The Standpoint? What is your message? My message is simple. Conscious careers. Conscious careers, whether it's a job or a career or whether it's a business but consciously choose it plan it i mean you wouldn't start a project without knowing where you're going or what you're doing with it so i think in anything that you do especially with your career um, investments plan it and then learn <sighs> and yeah <laughs> i know you'll be back sometime soon yeah but then okay. this time round, your final words to our viewers my final words, um, I would encourage everyone to dare to be different. Mm -hmm. You only have one life and there's no one else going to live it for you. And you have all your dreams and your passions. And if you are not going to do something out of it, who else would do it? So make sure that you live your life to the max every day. And uh, whatever other people say, don't care too much about it. Mm -hmm. The ones that criticize you the most when you start are your biggest fans in the end. Mm -hmm. So. Don't let other people determine your life. Live your life because it's yours and it's God-given. So make the most out of it. Thank you. <laughs> now, Linda, what, what's your... What's your favorite color? Green. I can tell <laughs> green. And you? Blue, I would say. Blue. <laughs> Men like blue. Okay, I have... Um, okay. Well, we just want you to remember us. And as a token of our appreciation, this is for you. Thank you so and much. And this one.
I'm sure you can give it to your mother. <laughs> yes. We just want to say thank you to your mother yeah, for believing so. in you <laughs> and um, giving you to the world so that we too can benefit from you because you can use it. And thank your daughter you. is too young to thank use you it. So much. <laughs> thank you can, you so much. You can look That's at so it. That's so pretty. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, this is gorgeous. Oh, yes. Isn't it just? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting to it. Oh, yeah. wow. For your mother to know that she's really, uh, you've really been to Ghana. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put mine on she, now. She will, she will love it. Oh, we're glad. We're glad, yeah. Okay, so we take a break. When we come back, I'll give you a bit of me. Just a little bit of me. So for many years, I've been saying that women need to be financially independent. But today, I've learned something new. We need to be financially liberated. Liberation. We need to invest enough of the spending unnecessarily on ourselves in just to compete with things we don't need to compete and people we don't need to compete with. Some of us work till, you know, God knows when. Work and the stress of work even sometimes kills us. All because we do not invest wisely. All because we do not strategize in terms of how to manage our finances. And then we blame others for it. You know our stories, right? Some witch somewhere is doing us some things and all that, you know. The mindset has to change from now. Right from now, we need to do something with our lives. You know, sometimes you may not see the results today, but years to come. Patience. Patience. All we pray for is for life. Once you have life, there will be the good times. I recently went to speak to some university students and at a point I told them to all sit on the floor. They thought I was this mad woman, you know, trying to get them to all dress up nicely. And we all, I also sat on the floor, spoke to them after that. I told them to get up and sit down. When I sat, I asked them, what has changed about them? When I asked them to sit on the floor and um, what, what, what changed? And just, they said nothing. That is life. Sometimes we hit the rock bottom. But the most important thing is how you rise and how you see yourself. The fact that you've been down there doesn't mean that you can't rise again. It's all about putting yourself together. Looking at yourself in the mirror and telling yourself it is possible. I can do it again. Failure is sometimes inevitable. It will come. But it is not the end of the world. The end of the world comes when you give up on yourself. Be a woman on the move. Don't give up. Let's keep going. Let's unlearn the narratives and uh, adopt new attitude. Change our mindset. And I'm sure we'll all be smiling. I don't want to be at the top alone because I'm learning. And I want to be at the top. I want to be financially liberated. And I want you to be financially liberated with me. So let's hold our hands as women, as young people, and let's go to the top together. Thanks for watching. See you same time next week. You know me. I'm a woman with super crazy faith in God. That with him, all things are possible. Grace is sufficient, but he has given us wisdom. And let's apply it. See you same time next week. Bye for now.